Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. And keep your back straight, naked, straight on line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes to be very clear with the, the practice we do. Because the clarity that you develop inside you it's very necessary once you start to practice. Because whatever you understand, you can put it to practice. Otherwise, your practice becomes a struggle. So when it, practice meditation means it is about understanding the mind. So there are behaviors, there are patterns that we have to recognize. So when it comes to the mind, it is not about this outside world that you see. It is about how you experience, how you recognize. Because out of that recognition, out of that experience, that your behavior is going to change. So, knowingly or unknowingly what happens from the past experience, in our past, we used to allow a lot of informations to come to us. And because of that, we develop uh, habitual patterns that allowing things to flow in. So naturally now your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, became kind of like a gravity field. Invite for the outside informations. So then, when the repetition happen again and again and again, there is a flow happens that outside things go around you, go through you. So the, that is the very nature of sanskar, mental formation. So if it is happens around you regarding your past and future, then that moment of experience build up another thoughts that is what called imagination. So that also a power of mind, power of the mind, imagination. But here, more than go into imagination, 
one thing that you have to remember to uplift or the develop awareness. Settling down. Not to jump here and there. Not to have a monkey mind. So that should be one effort to settle down. Let, 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 let the mind to settle down. Rather than developing thoughts on your practice. So one thing is settling down and having the awareness. And the next one is the recognition. So that recognition, inside, outside, both, what you recognize from outside and what you recognize from inside. So when you develop this way, your mind become more sharp and clear to become free from your own thoughts or your own experience. So you are not become biased to your moment of experience or your thoughts, your history. Once the mind comes to that level, there is another way that you can develop the wisdom. So there are a few there, there are many ways that you can attain to enlightenment. So one of the major important part is contemplate on cause and conditions, causality, especially when it comes to the vipassana level. Directly we go into that. Contemplate on cause and conditions. Other than that, there is uh, another method. You can at attain to the same level of wisdom. Contemplate on something. It's mainly related to, the, in the Vipassana level, it related to the five aggregates. Form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition. So that is what your inner mechanism, that is how the mind work. Mind and body work. There are five mechanisms that, that five things together bring the experience of life. And regarding this five thing that uh, aggregates, if you are capable to analyze these three methods, that also take you to wisdom. And basically, in theory, conventional practice, you can use it with this outside experience. So let's go one by one and see how you can come to, to recognize the very nature of dharma using these three mechanisms. So one is contemplate on this gratification the nature of gratification, when it comes to form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition, there is a gratification towards each other. And when it comes to self-centered mind, there is a gratification. It's like this, everything. So basically, inside, outside, all exist with a certain kind of gratification. So learn to see it. Contemplate on it. And rather than settling down with the object and go beyond the object and see the very behavior or the character of the object. How this object arises, for what this object arises, what is the very mechanism or the purpose of this? Then you will see it's all about gratification, grasping, clinging, going around, pulling towards. And when it comes to inside us, our thoughts, desires, intentions, and whatever the good or the bad feelings, happy or sad feelings, 
uh, that whatever rise in us have this nature, grasping nature. So once you see it, how it happening in you, how you thought, even in this very moment of thought, how it trying to, to grasp or clinging to something, as ideas maybe, as object, you reflect on again and again and again and you sit on it, you carry it, you are the one who maintaining it and it bringing more and more and more same kind of things. Gratification. The second one to reflect on, the danger. When it comes to this everything, the gratification come out of, come closer and, but still there is a danger, this all going to disappear. Uncertainty. And we don't know what will happen in the, in the very next moment. No one can guarantee about it. No one can make a plan regarding your next moment. Of course, uh, you, we can do that, but there's no guarantee that it's going to happen 100% exactly like that. Another way, anything can happen in any ways. It's always in front of your nose, but we don't see that. So seeing this danger is the so you can see it on the outside world, but at the same time, you can see it on five aggregates, form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition. Whatever the forms arise, whatever the forms we build up, that all going to go away itself. So whatever the thoughts that you contemplate, so itself, it will go away. So that's the danger. So whatever, whatever the happiness or the satisfaction or the feelings or the joy, pleasure, anger, hatred, jealousy, that whatever arises, it also go away itself. But when we don't see that nature, when we don't see the danger, we, we, we hold it, we keep it closer to us. But see the danger with this everything. It's everywhere, in everything. Anytime this uh, anything can disappear, and anytime you and me can disappear. Why this? Because this all happened depend on, on many reasons, cause and conditions. So then contemplate on it once a while at least. Because one day you're going to experience it suddenly. And that day then you're not going to collapse. And third one is escaping. Escape here means not to go and interfere or caught up on it. It's kind of like a trap. Gratification and the danger is kind of like a trap. So you are capable in this very moment go into it or escape from it. So you have to always contemplate on whatever the danger, whatever the suffering, there is a possibility you for yourself to escape. But sometimes we are the one who don't do it. We are the one who ourselves walk into it. So why you don't want to escape from it? Because you didn't suffer him. Or maybe your wisdom. Maybe you, 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 you misguided. You didn't understand yet. That's why the two the first two things, when you contemplate again and again and again, you are capable to see the method to escape. But the thing is, sometimes we think when before the situation happened, we think, oh, I can. I can escape. I am not going to go that far. 
I will just leave, try a little bit and come back. And that is how we always think. But once we enter, maybe we can't find the way back. And sometimes very famous places, you know, when, when people become very crowded and suddenly something happens, emergency situation, a lot of people can't find the emergency exit. And even people can't find the entrance. Even people can't find a window. Maybe they used to look at through it, the outside area. But when, when situation comes, our mind not capable to recognize or analyze. Because deeply, it has a kind of like unrest on this in conventional level, when other everything okay around us. That's why we can be okay. Otherwise, we are independently not okay. We are sustainably not okay. Because other things around. So this computer balance, internet here, and the lights, electricity here, everything works properly. Care is balanced, the table is balanced, and the floor is okay, that no windows or like that. In this environment that everything okay, I am okay. So then I think, oh, I am okay. But no. Deeply we are very fragile and undressed. So in case if something happens, then that unrest arises in thing us. And then we start to question, why it happened that way? Why this happened to me like this? Because that was there. You didn't see thing until that things go wrong. So then the only thing is escaping method means you are already developed the wisdom not to grasping or not to holding it, but to recognize the danger and the recognize the change and allow things to be as it is. Allow them to be there as they are. Not to trespass. Not to hold a kind of like ownership. Not to try to keep. So in that way, the, your mind always escaping from the trap. So you have to contemplate on it again and again and again and again. So those are the three things that you can attain into the liberation enlightenment. And rather than go towards the, the course and conditions or many other ways. So then when the time, when you have the time, contemplate. So when, it, when you contemplate, the very thing that you have to remember, basically you can think about outside thing, but mainly it is about you. And even it is not about your past or even it is not about the future. In this very moment, what you experience within yourself has, it has, the, has these three natures. Gratification, danger, and there is always, you have the, the, the line to escape. So if you want to see. That's why it's available anytime for anybody. So that's why again and again, again and again, you can give a try in case. Because it is there. Only thing is when the mind becomes busy, tired, lazy, lethargic, sleepy, weak, you can't find it. So that's why in basic level, through the tranquility state, we develop this ability of mind to observe, settle down, having, having undisturbed mind. So once you have that undisturbed mind, then you are capable to go into deeper and contemplate on your own thoughts, own moment, own experience, own feelings with these three measurements with this three nature, with this three, three fundamental behavior or fundamental qualities or the fundamental properties. 
about our mind. So mind is luminous. But the thing is that always this thinking pattern of the flow keep going around the memory and going around the imagination not allow that mind to become vivid. So that luminosity sometimes mesmerize us and then we hold it. That's why we so attached to our memory. But meditation is a method bringing your mind to one place and allowing it to settle down. Basically in the beginning you develop the awareness, sharpness, clarity, and at the same time, ardent, with the kind of like a very enthusiastic mind, with the, some kind of likeness, satisfaction, not thinking about disappointment or kind of like a sadness, worry, kind of like a, with the long pace, thinking, man, this life is suffering, I need to get out of it. You can't. That's why the very first thing, ardently, that's how you have to, to bring the mind clear. Then, then the clarity and the awareness, the recognition. And then at the same time, you have to unify it. You have to bring all together. Compost, to bring everything you need to tie to, together. That means all thoughts. Energy, awareness, attention, the strength, you have to all tie together. Not one part this, one part later, no. So in that way, you can see the very behavior, the moment of experience within yourself. You can see the thought arising and how the feelings arising, how, how the reactions arising. So one should recognize that. And you will see that each and every thought has the ability to bring some more or maybe it connected to something. It is not independent. Gratification. And then the, the danger, uncertainty. And then don't hold it. Let it be uh, as uh, experience, but don't claim it as yours. Withdraw from it. Maybe it is a very nice, comfortable, happy moment, but don't grasp it, clinging to it. Learn to withdraw from it. Divorce from it. Deeper inside you. So then by the time you will see you already escaped from the circle. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit. So your right palm on your left hand neck, it's straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and a scan head to toes yourself. And say, so may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gather here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. 
Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. In the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation. Please. Allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens through the sensation, recognize it, do nothing extra. Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your question. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world around this universe also as far as you can through galaxies other planets stars reminding yourself like this with clear intention mentally repeat after me may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings remain in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. And the loving kindness and compassion beginning from the heart. Over. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. Your backside. Your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart shine with the loving kindness and compassion 
from the bottom up with the maximum effort to the highest wishing yourself may all living beings in this universe be well and happy So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their own duty and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influence or so any evils. ಸಂಪದಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯಾಂಪತಿಯ